All right, everybody. So, welcome back once again. Last session. We all had a bit of an ill-fated trip to the Wandering Emporium. Arriving there, everything was perfectly fine. Everything was perfect at first. Um, you went and acquired your items that you had requisitioned from the Emporium. Visiting the Fire Snake Forge. Um, Balafon checking in with the Barber. And um, some warnings issued from Bernie. And you also got the bit of information that Bernie could choose to allow you to remember certain things. A warning about Mahati being one of them. After you all had arrived and gone about your business, um, Mahati received word that Feanor was nearby. And he immediately set out to the wastes to try and find her, encouraging you all to indulge at his establishment before you left. Kind of hinting, more than hinting, that you all should not leave before he returned. And so you met, you hung out at the um, in, at Infernal Rapture at his restaurant for a while. Had a good meal. Your first meal since arriving here in Avernus that did not taste like ash and leave you generally unsatisfied. Um, but... When Mahadi returned, a lot of his true character became quite clear. Mahadi is in fact a Rakshasa, and a extraordinarily jealous one at that. He saw your interaction with Feanor as unacceptable, as she had pretty much rebuked him and snuffed all of his attempts to communicate with her for the past many years. So the interaction that you all had was a big deal to Mahati. He saw you all as rivals for her affections and did not take well to it. And so he began to taunt you all, trying to goad you all into a confrontation that would see you bound to his service eternally. Of course, those actions being any sort of violent or aggressive action being taken inside of the Wandering Emporium. He told you all of his involvement with what happened to Lulu about how he found her wandering out on the plains, lost and desperate and wounded, tricked her into accompanying him back to the Emporium, where he splashed her with sticks water, essentially feeble-minding her and ripping away her memories, before presenting her to Zeriel as a gift. Zeriel, you all learned, could not bear Lulu's presence. The reasons for this are generally unknown as of now, but for whatever reason, she cast Lulu away, and that is how she found her way back to the Material Plane. But that does not change the fact that Mahadi essentially turned her over to Zeriel after crippling her psychologically. So, after unsuccessfully attempting to goad you all into a confrontation inside the Wandering Emporium, you all departed. He allowed you to leave, vowing vengeance on you at a later date. It was then that you all set out across the plains of Avernus once more, riding sprinkles into the sunset-ishness of Avernus towards Bell's Forge. It wasn't long as you all traveled across the wastes that a massive towering volcano came into, came into view in the distance, as, of course, all forges are located in volcanoes. That was your obvious destination. You all began to make your way towards that area and found a massive army Thousands, if not tens of thousands, of fiends assembled at the base of this mountain. Struck as odd a little bit because this force could very well be capable of turning the tide at the River Styx beneath El Terrell, where Zeriel was currently waging war against the devils, against the demons of the Abyss. But regardless of why Bell has chosen to keep his forces here, you all did begin your ascent up the volcano. Most of the fiends parting ways in front of you, a few of them stopping to challenge you, only one of which really willing to follow through. A horn devil blocked your path and essentially wished to take you all as his prisoners before Bell. Obviously, you all weren't having any of that and kicked the heavy loving shit out of this devil before being allowed an audience with Bell. An Arrhenius that was watching the entire exchange approached. She was obviously a little more in charge than the Horned Devil that you all had been interacting with, and she was able to lead you all to the caldera of the volcano, an archway at the top 
which he directed you all through, seemingly to just empty into the caldera of the volcano itself. But as you each step through this archway one by one, you were engulfed by flames and found yourself deep within the heart of the volcano, where you descended down a wrought iron staircase into a cavernous forge. Channels of bubbling lava winding through this complex, casting fiery hues all over the place. You passed chained fire giants with coal black skin and fiery orange hair, hammering out weapons until you finally came under the malignant gaze of a pit fiend seated on a flying throne. This individual introduced himself as the arch fiend Bell, and um, AJ, here's a quick look at that glorious bastard for you. Pretty dope. Yeah. And is he welcomes you all. large? He is huge. Huge. Okay. He is a very big guy. So, seated on his throne, he welcomed you all to his domain and thanked you all for delivering to him one of his rivals and now one of his tr- prized possessions, the hidden lord Gargoth, whom shield Bell has hammered out into a chamber pot which sits next to his throne. So, it is here that we will go ahead and pick up. So, Gargoth's cursing leading, beginning to fade away into the background of your minds. Bell would stand up on his floating throne and say, So, what has brought you all before me? A number of things. But first... I must relieve myself of a charge I have been given. And I will reach into the pouch on my belt and pull forth the orb. His eyes would go wide just a moment. Um, Insight checks from y'all, please. So, Kroll, you see his eyes widen, almost with surprise. He contains it extraordinarily well, but you manage to just catch that quick glimpse. His throne floats down towards the ground, and he steps off it. Archon the Cruel, and I believe by command of his mistress, bade me bring this and present it to you. And I will use Mage Hand to make it float across toward him. He would hold out one clawed hand and let the orb fall into it. And I no longer be attuned to it. Okay, and making sure, because I yeah. believe I can't be unattuned to it without somebody else claiming it. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Bell would most certainly have the ability to immediately attune to it as an orange uh-huh. fiend, so he would do so, ending your attunement. And then he would kind of look at it. He says, Seems the Queen of Chaos is finally ready to become involved. He closes oh, it his seems. He closes his fist and the orb seems to disappear. He's obviously sequestered it somewhere. But So, I know why you're here. Why are you here? And he gestures in the wider sense. Request for a sword. 
So I've heard. A special sword. Not just any oh, sword. Dear. Yes, not just any sword. Indeed. Well, certainly, certainly is good that you've not expressed any desire to intervene with my great mistress's plans. Simply seek well, a sword. Why want to do that? Indeed, indeed. Well, it just so happens that I may know the location of a very, very special sword. However, eh. as I'm sure you all have learned in your time here, nothing is free in Avernus. You wish the location of a sword? I need some items that were requisitioned without permission, recovered before they can fall into the wrong hands. Seems like just the kind of job for all of you. I understand you've all become quite adept at recovering things, acquiring things for the various denizens of this place. He would go on telling you all about how his benevolent and ever-powerful mistress has relieved him of some items that he finds are just far too dangerous to be in her possession. He would... In, go ahead. In her possession? On Personal their way, possession? On their way to her possession. He would say that Zeriel had some of her minions recover from him nine adamantine rods. I'd say that they're extremely dangerous to Zeriel, that she simply doesn't understand the gravity of the things that she's taken, or just how terribly detrimental they could be to her forces should they be used improperly. He says that he knows of a being, a creature here, we lose someone? Foster isn't in the roll 20 session anymore. Foster, you I'm good? still here. I'm still okay. here. Okay, good. Okay, so. He would mention these nine adamantine rods that Zeriel requisitioned from him, stating how dangerous they are to her war efforts. He simply wishes them recovered so that they do not interfere with her plans. Says that he knows of a being, a creature, that had accidentally made its way into Avernus, that is a collector of knowledge of sorts says that if anyone is to know where Zeriel has taken these items, it would be this creature. Because he has some of his best soldiers interrogating it at the moment, but they're not making any progress. He says that he would be happy to have a guide take you to this creature so that you could try your hand at the interrogation. So we do your heist job in exchange you give us the sword or you give us directions to the sword? He tells you where it is. He says there's only three individuals on the entire plane who would know where it is. He looks down towards Lulu. He says it seems that one of them is, is incapable of helping you at the moment. Says the other one won't. And then he gestures towards himself. 
only me. Hopefully, we'll eventually find this wild goose we've been chasing. Um, but I think I guess we have to we have to agree. Uh, we have no nothing else we can really do. What is so special about these rods? No, don't concern yourself with that. It's they're simply too dangerous to be allowed near Zeriel's forces. Could be catastrophic. For you or for Zeriel? Oh. My wishes are Zeriel's wishes, of course. Of Can course. I insight that? <laughs> yeah, of course. I don't think I need an insight check on that. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, he's he, 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 This is thinly veiled. Thinly veiled, Bill. He... I don't, I don't know exactly how to put this. He is very much... He is, he's telling the truth that these items would be catastrophic to Zeriel. Um, the fact, the idea that that bothers him in any way, shape, or form is just completely not there. He, he could care less about Zeriel's safety or her success. Can I do like a history check or something to see, or an arcana check to see what value these rods would have for him? Sure, yeah. Go ahead and make an arcana check. Rolling hot tonight, guys. Here we go. Yep. Huh. So yeah, no idea outside of the fact that adamantine is a rare and valuable, valuable metal. Um, important in a lot of different uh, constructs of various power levels. So, what is this creature that we must extract the information from? Please do not tell me that it is another celestial. Celestial? Oh, no, no. Quite the opposite, I'm afraid. This being is, how does one describe the indescribable, the formless, the malformed? Have you ever met a Cybriex before? What am I saying? No. If I, if you had, I would be able to see it. You'd have a third arm or a few extra eyes, a tail, perhaps, where there was none before. What these creatures lack in substance, he says with a bit of a wry smile, they make up for in their sheer ability to collect keep information. The creature has been traveling the plains for a hundred years. Its mind is full of this plane's secrets. If it has laid its eyes on something, it knows everything about it. As far as I know, it is the last creature to have seen the rods. At least the last reliable creature. So, he says as he steps back onto his throne, puts his hands behind his head and floats back up towards the center of the room. Find me the rods. I show you the citadel. As he mentions the citadel, Lulu's eyes kind of widen a bit. The, the golden citadel? And Bell shakes his head. I'm sorry, little one, but we call it the Bleeding Citadel now. Sounds just peachy. 
quite fitting, isn't it? Oh, well, guys, um, don't think we have much um, choice here. I'm metagaming here, the so it's something's going to assist us in finding this thing roaming around Avernus, right? So he he would offer to he would offer you a guide. Sorry, I thought I mentioned that already. He will offer you, you someone to, to guide you there. Our defeated foe. Ah, the glorious. No. Yep. No, he's already <laughs> he's already been demoted, I'm afraid. I'll send a far more trusted ally with you. He looks around the room. Ah! Bellacros! You hear from behind one of the fire giant's handles, fuck! As a little imp Steps out. <laughs> yes, sir. That you shall accompany these fine, fine travelers to the Cybriax. He says, Are you sure it's, you wouldn't rather have one of these big, powerful guys? One of them? He's like, No, no, no. You'll be perfect. You'll be perfect. Unless, of course, you'd like to clean our new friend here gestures towards Gargoth, and Gargoth's like, no! And the imp says, no, no, fine, fine. He, he steps over in front of you all. Says, you guys got a boat? We need a boat. I That's none of your concern. We'll only ask you questions. This is gonna be wonderful, isn't it? Ugh. Anna would go up to Valifon and kind of like cover her mouth with her hand and be like, hey, do we have a boat? Did we get the boat? I don't remember. We, we traded for the folding boat, yes. Yes. Nice. Okay, good. We do have a boat. Bell would say that if you are all if you all are in need of um, conveyance that is capable of traveling with a war machine, he can offer you one of his barges. That's I think, good. I don't think the folding boat can accommodate sprinkles. No. The barge could though. So this little one will take us where we need to go. So Balacros say, yeah, let's get this over with. The faster I get you all to the Cyberx, the faster I can either fucking die or get back here to probably die. With such, with such wondrous life goals, I'm not sure why you're rushing. You been out there? It sucks. Eh, it's whatever. It's like meh. He nods. You can see a deep look of consideration on his face as if that was like very, very deep. He's thinking way too far into it. <laughs> Incredibly wise words. <laughs> Lead the way, little one. Before we go, I have a favor to ask. Bells. Does this guy have eyebrows? His eye crest? Whatever the hell that is, rises. His forehead muscles? I don't yeah. know. Yeah. <laughs> he has brow muscles. Where the brows should be, there's. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Ridges. <laughs> yeah, red ridges, something like that. We seem to have found ourselves in a precarious situation, and I'm trying to locate a particular item, and maybe one of your giants could forge them for me. 
Mine says, go on. I need a pair of anti-magical shackles. Anti-magic shackles, however you say it. Says, interesting request. If one was in my position, one might wonder why you would require restraints capable of neutralizing such a powerful foe. You of all people should know there are friends and enemies all over this place. He smiles. Dagger-like teeth peeking through. A contract will be necessary, of course. Binding any use of these items against myself or my subordinates. But find me the rods. See them safely returned. And you will have your shackles. Bill would tip his hat, and I guess off we go with the imp and the barge, right? The imp and the barge? Why does that sound like a ska band's name or something? <laughs> it sounded funny when I said it out loud, so... I'm stealing that, writing <laughs> that down, adding to my homebrew. That's a bar now. <laughs> That's a bar now, nice to be. It's every bar in Dungeons and Dragons has to be something and something. Yeah, the something and something. It's just like every young adult book has to be of blank and blank. Or the blank of blank and blank. It's horrible. Ah. It's dystopian. Yeah. <laughs> and back in the old days in D&D, &D, it was always some adjective and then a noun. You know, the prancing pony. The vulgar unicorn. Yeah. Right. It's still that. It's, the, it's the, everywhere. Right? We just got two of them. The golden citadel and the bleeding citadel. <laughs> Alright. So, as you all begin to gather yourselves to leave, Bell would say, Wait! Your friend there. You know who she is gestures towards Lulu. Lulu would kind of lie behind one of you. You are aware yeah. who it is you're traveling with. We are. A rarity in this place. One so pure. So innocent. I could tell you the location of the Citadel now in exchange for our mutual friend there. Now we'll get the rods. Very well, very well. Worth a shot, he says as he lounges back into his throne. Bill will, like, put his arm around Lulu and be like, time to go. <laughs> Just walk out. Yep. Before Valifon says something that he shouldn't say. <laughs> Alright. Back up the stairs. So, back up the stairs, uh, where you see a solid wall where you all had stepped through a moment ago. And you hear booming from down below in the forge level. Good luck! And then you hear a finger snap, and you all feel this brief moment of intense, searing, fiery pain. And you reappear right in front of Sprinkles. Closed little singe, little smell of burnt hair here and there. Aside from that, with brimstone. <laughs> How? Bill kind of looks at Lulu. 
Lulu, did you just make enemies with everyone you came across down here? I don't understand. <laughs> I, I just, I just, I just fly around and try to be nice to people, and everyone here seems to want like to give me to people or sell me or eat me or something. Maybe you should change that then and not be nice to people, and maybe they won't get rid of you. <laughs> No, I don't think we I, won't get rid of you either way. I don't think by the way. <laughs> she kind of looks up towards you and gives you a smile and a cool. Ah, oh, thanks. I didn't think you guys would get rid of me. But um so as she is as you all are getting back into back into um sprinkles and getting all set up, he says he says that I knew where the sword was. I see her thinking just really, really hard for a minute. And after, after, after a while of her thinking, she says, I remember, I remember, I remember. She stops and struggles to remember what it is that she remembers. She says, I told you all, about Zeriel's commander, Yale, how she helped me. Yes. He, the big guy in there, when he was talking, Yale and I, we flew the sword away and we rammed it into the ground and this m cathedral shot up around us. It was beautiful. I used to be able to become a lot bigger than I am right now. I bet you still could if you tried. Feels like dope. Let's drink a potion. <laughs> she says, yeah, I was I was a war mount. I carried angels into battle. That doesn't sound like me, does it? A little. Yeah, I mean, we've seen you fight. You would act like it. You act bigger than you are. There's something else, too. Something scary that I'm remembering. Somebody was chasing us that day. Her Do eyes. You remember what they look like. Her eyes go wide and she nods. The demon lord Inogu wants the sword. Hunts it. He hates it as much as he hates her. We fought him once. I don't remember where. It was a nice little village. She starts describing this, like, pretty village. Goes on about it for a while. And... Do we know anything about this Inogu? Yes. Make a religion or arcana check. Why can't they just be athletic checks? <laughs> Why can't I just, like, punch what? the knowledge out of the air? Hey, okay, nice. An athletics check to remember something yeah. is punching Valifon until he tells you what it's about. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. <laughs> okay. All right, so yeah, Valifon... Um, Whatever meta knowledge you have about Yinugo, you can feel free to use. Um, he is the demon lord of. I, I always call him the demon lord of hunger, but hunger and hunt and yeah, the hunt. He so legend says that gnolls were created when hyenas drank the blood of his kills. Yeah. Wait, this is the triple flail hyena guy. Yeah. yeah. That's him. Yeah. <laughs> Dedicated only to destruction, the ruler of ruin has sought the collapse of civilization on multiple occasions. Yeah, we should totally avoid that. Yeah. Yeah, I agree. We got too many spicy tempers in this group. Two will walk out of that alive. Old of you to assume you'd have a choice if confronted by such a being. 
sprinkles is fast. <laughs> <laughs> pickles, sprinkles is fast. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> So, I want to ask Lulu a question when we get on the road. Okay. So yeah, as you're all as you're all listening to Lulu, um, Bellacros would just he would lean up against the wheel of of Sprinkles, obviously tiny, like he's a quarter the size of one of the wheels, and he says, "Oh, oh, my heart. I think I I think I felt it. I think I felt it beat for just a moment. So sad. So beautiful." Uh, and then he drops onto the ground pops back up are you guys done can we go yeah yeah keep talking I'll cut that tongue out <laughs> <laughs> you see his mouth open for a moment and then he looks at you defiantly and then closes his mouth <laughs> Anacola may I have one of your hairs for a moment uh Sure. Uh, yeah, and she'll pull out a lock and hand it over. Um, so that allows me to tell to communicate telepathically with you, correct? I can telepathically communicate with you. Oh, I it's not it's too unfortunate. Way. It's unfortunate. It's not, it's not great, honestly. <laughs> but <laughs> ten mile radius, but yeah. Oh, never mind. Sorry. She'll sadly take it back and <laughs> glue it back to her head. Just kind of sticks there. Uneven. Um, <laughs> mouth is hanging open again. He's just watching like... Fuck. <laughs> uh, um, Which way, Bellicose? Um... He he doesn't even speak. He just kind of gestures in a general direction towards the river sticks. Okay. Um. Bill starts to climb on sprinkles. I can't sleep on him. Uh, so you can't cool. sleep on Bellacruz? Yeah. Nice. Okay. Oh, and it doesn't work because I don't think I th he probably has more than ten hit points, doesn't he? Checking right Man. now. Man, five D eight, and you got ten. Yeah, that's unfortunate. Jesus. <laughs> that's a really <laughs> bad roll. Four two one one two. <laughs> it's exactly ten hit points. Up. Yeah, go to sleep. So he just gestures. And as he's mid gesturing, the force of his forward arm just sends him sprawling face first into the dirt. Well, he may be charged by Bell to guide us where we need to go. He is probably undoubtedly charged by Bell to remember everything we say, do, think about if he could read our minds, which luckily imps cannot. Um, so be careful what conversations you have in his earshot. Bill, with his huge ass grin, tips his head back. Well, you're at an elegant solution. I was just going to tie him up and drag him behind. <laughs> he's, he's sprawled face first in the dirt. His finger's still pointing in the direction that he was trying to point you towards. Well, let's go. So, how long yep. does it last for? Um, until um, one minute or until we wake him up. So if you if there's a conversation you want to have with Lulu, or whatever, have it and then he can wake it up. And we want to take a vote to see whether I cut out his tongue or not. And I'll pull out one of my knives. <laughs> he still needs to be able to guide us. He's not doing a very good job. He's just pointing. <laughs> yeah. Well, good sign. Oh, my God. Speak. I love how there's not even a saving throw or no one just he just drops. <laughs> <laughs> Whatever, let's go. I don't have anything else to say. And here I thought getting the getting getting the sleep spell on, on my last level up was was a waste. <laughs> <laughs> I love sleep um, spell. It's one of my favorites. 
Yeah, but at this level, it's almost never useful. <laughs> um, when, uh, yeah, when we're on the road, uh, Anna's gonna sit next to Lulu, um, and say, hey, hey, Lulu, I have something to ask you. Yeah? Um, and, um, she's going to, she's going to meet Lulu's eyes and ask her, do you know where Celestial Caramel comes from? I've been wondering about this for days. <laughs> it's, that was the thing that we found on uh, Mahadi's uh, desserts and I, I thought you wanted to ask her something that was vital <laughs> to our mission right? nope. her, her brow kind of and, furrows for a moment she says is this a trick question do you not do you know no I genuinely don't know <laughs> she shakes her head I, I, I don't I don't know never heard of it before <sighs> Insight check. Yeah, go ahead. No, I believe her. Yeah, she... believe her. <laughs> <laughs> uh, She'll find out. That's her goal now. She's got the staff. Now she just needs to find out where Celestial Caramel comes from. Okay. <laughs> Sorry. I... <laughs> no. no. <laughs> she was treating it as super serious. Uh, but yeah, it was just a dumb joke. I mean, yeah. that's, that's good. That's perfect. <laughs> I, I know where it comes from, but Lulu sure doesn't. And here I thought you were just going to say, do you know the Muffin Man? But, do right, you know the, the Muffin Man? Uh, AJ's next seen, character. Uh, <laughs> I haven't seen Shrek in way too long. Yes. Didn't the River Sticks move? It right. did. It's back. <laughs> Uh, so, after about maybe an hour of travel uh, across the fields in the direction that um, that uh, Bella Cross directed you towards, um, he would wake up. About uh, well, how how would you guys go about waking him up? Would you would you wake him or would you let him wake naturally a minute later? A minute later, he can wake up. Okay, he just pops up, looks around. How do I taste dirt? You 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 dozed off. Uh, has a mosquito you started bitten you? Dirt, it's anything? the strangest thing. You haven't been bit by mosquitoes, have you? Oh, one of those big fucking wasps did stab stab me in my left ass cheek a couple weeks ago. Uh, probably a allergic reaction then. Feeling right ever since. See a deception check at advantage. That might not help. <laughs> Oof! <laughs> I'm feeling rather glib. He nods. He says, here! Check it out, how's it look? Does it look any worse? And he turns around and shows you his left ass cheek. It definitely looks worse. Damn! <laughs> Alright, well... I pass that again, just drag me along, will ya? No Bill's problem, buddy. Wood. I got you. <laughs> Alright. Cool. Good. 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 Y'all didn't... Y'all didn't say anything interesting while I was out, did ya? We had a lengthy debate on the value of an imp's tongue and whether we should boil it or cook it in a roast. Oh. I said it was good as a material component, but... No, 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 you broil. Broil it. Five minutes. We also discussed the meaning of life and figured out the answer. But we're too tired to talk about it now. There's a machine. There's a machine over, over by Archon's Tower that likes to try and figure that out. It's been at it for a couple thousand years now. Dang. They're really bad at it, though. Yeah. Seventy-one. Explain. That's the answer. That's the answer. Yep. 71. Okay. Right. The freaking the frickin across the universe, I mean, the, across the universe, freaking Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy fan in me is like blowing up right now. Like, it makes no sense. <laughs> what? <laughs> right. But yeah. Not long.
long thereafter, you all do approach the banks of the River Styx. There is a dock that um, that Bellacros guides you all to. And it seems to be some sort of experiment underway. They have a what looks like a diving bell. You all familiar with what a diving bell is? I know what a diving bell is. So can you can't use it. a diving bell without getting wet, though. <laughs> so, you see several fiends on the dock. There is a crane levied out over the sticks. And massive iron structure. It's like a pair of docking arms or something like that. And they extend over the sticks. There's hefty clamps and chains and bars fixed to the docking arms. And there's a gigantic basalt citadel shaped like a sword moored at the dock. You see there's a lot of fiends running around on. This thing is massive. Um, likely the first time that many of you have seen a flying fortress. That is essentially what this is. It thrums. Screaming souls get sucked and siphoned up into it. And... That's Do I know what this is? Balafon, with your study of the Nine Hells, I feel like you would know what that is. It is a infernal a flying fortress. A, um... How, how common are they? Not extremely. This is the first one that you all have seen down here. Through your research and your knowledge of the area, you would know that there's probably a good 100 to 200 of them in service at any given time. Okay. But for so, an entire plane of existence, they're stretched pretty thin. No. Nah. So... Are there any identifying marks on it that would let us know whose focus it is? Yes. Uh, it is very clearly belonging to Zeriel. And as Belacros sees you eyeing that, he would look up and say, they're all hers. She took control of all of them from Bell when she took over. Yeah, but is that one hers personally, or is that one just hers? Hers. Belacros would look around it and say, I don't see a host. Zeriel travels around and she's got a couple thousand following around with her. Okay. Phew. All I'm picturing is Vader on one of the like decks of a Star Destroyer staring off at space right now. So while you yeah. all were having the conversation, so drive and... casually, <laughs> <laughs> but not too casual. <laughs> right, not, not too casual. Stay, stay like two and a half miles above the speed limit. <laughs> All right, but um, as you're all having this conversation and watching, the diving bell, which has which dropped into the water not too long ago, um, being held up by these loading cranes, rusty things, it rises back up out of the river sticks, and you see two fiends hop on top of it, start undoing the la the claps, the cl the uh, clashes, and the blah, words are fucking hard. Start undoing the uh, clamps and the latches that are sealing this thing shut. And they look up and they shake their head at this um, creature that's standing up higher up on the docks. Seems to be the one in charge. A horned devil. He's got a mask that covers his eyes, but you can still see some red burning behind it. And he shouts some curses in Infernal as you see... The demon, the devils that had jumped up on top of the diving bell, pulling out two bearded devils that just have these blank stares, just staring off into space, dragged off, their bodies pretty much limp. The two devils there on top of the bell just huck them into the sticks. One of them yells, Still needs some work! And you see them load suction tubes into the diving bell and begin pumping out the water from it as it is obviously filled. Like it leaks. All right. During that whole thing, your guide has requisitioned a barge for you all.
Excellent. Yeah, me the same. Is you would is jump there up. like a ramp to drive sprinkles on? There most certainly is. Drops down and lands we, on the ba on the uh, banks. We make sure to keep Lulu inside sprinkles. Once you're all loaded up on there, um, your guide gestures to somebody up at the front, a fiend, one of the fiends that is in charge of ferrying up and down the sticks. It's one of the Yugoloths. I forget exactly which kind. And you all begin making your way southward along the river Styx. Anyone know so we are sea like shanties? <laughs> roughly here, right? Okay. There you go. We're going here. Indeed. All right. So yeah, keep an eye out for trouble, both in the water and in the air, and on the banks and. <laughs> Right, right. So Bellacross would say that it's probably a few hours until you reach the Cypriex. It says, feel free to talk. Discuss your plans. He says literally that and sits down close by. Approximately how many hours? Um, he says probably five or six. You all could wait on the banks if you all wanted to take, uh, if you all wanted to rest up a bit. We can rest up while on the barge, just take turns. All right. So we're long resting, right? I think we can only short rest. Uh, you all, that was the, uh, if you all would like to long rest, you can. Bellacrosa. I mean, I'm pretty just, good. Yeah, Bella, if, if, if you want, you can. It would just involve you all hanging out on the banks near the Cybriax for a couple more hours than the trip would take. Uh. What'll it be? I mean, short, rests, I don't... short rests or long? I'm fine with the short rest. Works for me. Super. All right, we're good then. All right, sounds good. Like an hour into the trip, uh, Anna would go up to the top of the ship and wild shape into a giant eagle and then nice. just kind of lay there. She has like she can stay like that for four hours. So, yeah. Nice. All right, Adep, so everybody uh, go ahead and I'm... take care of your rests. Uh could I make any checks to see if I like see anything as I'm like looking out. Yeah, go ahead and make a perception check. Do so at advantage since you're using your eagle eyes. Yes, keen sight. Nineteen. Okay. Um, you've seen a lot of this area already, and a lot of the features, like, it's interesting. Like sometimes you'll focus in on something and it feels like it's miles and miles away. But then it'll start to come into focus, into detail, almost like it's only less than a mile away. The distance is extremely difficult to tell, but you see a few different things. You can see the remnants of the Demon Zapper, where you freed Mooncolor. 
to the south farther, it looks just like the entire, like, the, it looks like the plains are literally on fire, which is weird. It just looks like the, like, it looks like the ground is on fire for miles and miles in one direction. Um, aside from that, the only other thing that you would see is a great black lake to the west, to the east, sorry. Uh, strange trees forming up out of it. Things like that. Is there anything that you wanted to take, wanted to try and focus on? You could also Honestly, see the watchtowers. Like it looks like watchtowers dot the river Styx. How they remain when the Styx is ever changing is difficult to discern, but you definitely do see watchtowers along the way. Um, yeah, I'm mostly just looking for if there's any enemy ships or aerial threats. Okay. So, sometimes every now and then off in the distance you can see something flying. Nothing seems to be approaching the barge, though. Every now and then you see a flight of fiends that look like they may be approaching, but at some point veer off. Right around when they would get into within visual range of the barge. I'm going to cast Tiny Servant at 4th level. On three silver pieces. And they sprout little arms and legs. And then I open up my pouch and they run into it. Nice. Okay. Alright. So. After the several hours traveling along River Styx, as Bellacros mentioned, it does take pretty much the exact same amount of the exact amount of time you mentioned it would. The barge grinds up along the banks and the ramp drops. Bellacros would say we drive from here, it's not far. Vroom vroom. Yeah. So after a little ways of travel, you all begin to see a strange iron structure coming into view before anything else. It seems to have some sort of balloon dangling in between. And the closer that you all get, you realize that that thing is not a balloon. It is a Cyberex. Until you all get close enough that you can see spiky chains lashing a 15 foot diameter floating blob of quivering flesh. 20 foot tall wrought iron scaffold. There are two, there's two fiends wrapped in chains standing at the top of this scaffold. They're prodding, stabbing, slashing at, generally torturing a bloated creature by tightening its chains and see demon ichor oozing from its wounds, forming a shallow pool around the bottom of the scaffolding. One of them slashes at it and is sprayed with the stuff, makes a sickening gesture, but otherwise continues with its work. There's a third jackal-headed fiend using a bronze horn to yell loudly at the bloated prisoner in multiple languages. The jackal-headed creature sits cross-legged about halfway up the scaffolding. I'm sorry. A ways away from the scaffolding, just like on the base, sitting on a rock, shouting up orders at them. Behind him, or to the north of him, there's a bunch of these miserable looking little creatures all chained to little rocks. And as you're all approaching, before these creatures notice you, they say, How long has it been? One of them looks down. 23 hours, sir. Very well. Prepare yourselves. He says, and as for you lot, he gestures with his hand and a massive fireball erupts right here in the midst of all of these creatures. He 
hand. Very quickly, you all see they are all engulfed in flame. Lovely. Burns away for a brief moment. And all that's left there is ash. He looks up towards the beast, the thing chained, says, Any minute now till you try again. You feeling lucky this time? Now this can end at any... And what are you all doing here? Who are you? Bellicro steps out. He says, I'm here to help you with the interrogation. It looks out towards you all and he says, Bell thinks you can succeed where I have not been able to for 10 days, does he? Well, well, we'll see. We'll see just how smart all of you really are. Gestures up towards the thing. That's the thing lashed to the scaffolding, by the way. And as he says that, I need everybody to please make wisdom saves. Dang it. <laughs> My favorite. I know we're all so amazing at this, guys. I'm sure we'll all do fine. I know we're all equally great at these. We just need Anna's. Okay. Bill. You yep. hear a booming, seething, bubbling voice in your head. Seems to be speaking all languages and no language at once. It says, you. I know what it is you seek. Free me. Free me and I shall tell you all you wish to know and more. Secrets of the multiverse. He starts going on, giving you these exorbitant promises, telling you he'll make you a god, all these things. Do we all hear this? Just Bill. Mm -hmm. I'm bad at wisdom, I guess. We know, I know that a force tried to enter my mind, though. Yes, yes. that you do. Okay. At this point, I am going to cast Bless at second level. Bill will kind of pause for a second. Okay, so everybody, y'all are all now blessed. Okay. Dope. Gonna need it. <laughs> yeah. Fools, as I respond to the, what's the Seabricks? Fools right. promises is all I'm hearing. You're gonna have to actually offer up information if I even raise one finger for you. It kind of sinks who down. Go ahead. Who are you talking to, Bill? C-Rex. All three of them, turn. the three creatures on the scaffolding look towards you. The jackal-headed guy jumps down off his perch and approaches. It spoke to you. It speaks. All what did I can, it say? All, I, all that I can think of is the stupid Star Wars quote. Now, the, the ability to speak does not make it intelligent. So, it is intelligent. A terrible, terrible intelligence. It's proven a match for my impressive intellect, and that, that says something, my friend. Bell has sent you here to assist in our interrogation, so, so assist. He gestures towards it. Find out what it knows, what information it's gathered from this place. Bill, in your mind, you hear again, 
Release me! Slay! Slay these puny beings and I will tell you all! How close is the jackal thing to us? Close it's right. Enough. It's it's right next to you. I see. Ah, oh, there's where it is. Okay. I'll look at the jackal and ask him, "What are you trying to obtain from him?" It spent nearly a hundred years traveling across the plains. If it sees something, it knows all about that thing. It knows all about it. We, us, that have been tasked with studying and interrogating it if all that our memories wiped before the moment we it came into contact with it uh, it looks towards you speaking to you so it you knows know we need to know everything about you it knows all your secrets your goals everything everything that you may try to hide from it it knows trust not a word it says so you want it to answer questions, but you don't trust what it says? Leave it to us to determine the truth in its words. It will lie to get what it wants. We must find the truth in its lies. Looks back towards you, Bill. This bell it was obviously wise to send you. It speaks to you. It offers power, yes? Godhood, even? It offered that if I kill you, it will tell me what I want to know. So maybe you should cut me some space and let me think. You can take a step back. unwise he looks towards the four of you yes you could likely slay us but then you'd be left with this the thing as he gestures towards it gurgles and just begins to pulsate strangely I do uh, an insight check to see if the things that it's promising are actually even obtainable. I assume Godhood is not. Yeah, go ahead. Because we all know Don't Bill would be a terrible god, so... Don't trust anything it says, Bill. What do you mean? He sounds <laughs> believable. Bill kind of like wave towards the group, like huddle up here, team. I don't know what to say. What should we offer it to convince it to tell us where we need to go? Or where the, what are we looking for? The rods? The rods. Um... In my mind, I'll say it. You know then that Bell has sent us to collect his adamantium rods. It says, I know all. I know why you're here. I even know her, the little one. There is. Uh, go ahead, because I'm not hearing this. Yeah, Bill, it tells you that it could get Lulu's <sighs> memories back. Did it get into Lulu's mind? What I know. Lulu does. Lulu is here. Lulu does not seem to be frightened, and she doesn't seem like she's talking to anyone. You know, Lulu. She would literally just be talking out loud if this thing was in her head. Uh, Bill will under his breath to the group. It's offering to tell us all of Lulu's memories if we set it free. You say, that trust out, it. you say that out loud, but trying to keep it from the other creature. Yeah, I can do like a stealth check or something if you'd like. That'll be a perception check on his part. Okay, 
So it definitely notices you with a 19 on its perception. It definitely notices you speaking to the rest of the group. And he looks towards you. What does it tell you? It lies. All it knows is lies. You must interpret them. Any thoughts, team? Try to get it. Tell it that we need proof that it tells the truth before we are willing to bargain. Uh, Bill talking to the Seabricks then. Your words feel empty. I see no reason to trust what you offer. You need to prove to us that you're here to help. Where are the rods? I know where. I could tell you. But then what would I have left? And I could leave you. So count who's trapped in chains and who's not. A show of faith. I've seen the rods you seek. I've seen a destroyed fortress that was once in the air. Destroyed by demons that should not have known its location. Struck down. Release me. And I will show you the location of this wrecked fortress. Elacross. Uh, Bill, that was in your head. You relay this oh, information. Oh, sorry. Yep. Yeah, I'll relay that. Uh, exactly as that. Uh, he will tell us the location of the cathedral if we free him. Of the cathedral? What was it? It, what no, it's a, it was a wrecked flying fortress. He said he saw the rods wrecked in a wrecked fl flying fortress. Bellicros, at that point, would say, I know where that's at. Went down a couple days ago. The only one that went down in the past 20 years. Bill was Let's kind go. of an intimidating hand wave. Go on. The Sibriex, at hearing that, would begin going absolutely wild. Yanking against its chains, spraying bile everywhere, which reminds me. As it begins spraying bile everywhere, I need holy shit! All of you to please make dexterity saving throws. Yeah, danger sense and bless. I got danger sense as well. Nice. Very high saving throws. <laughs> the three devils will also be making their saves. All right, everybody. So as this thing begins convulsing and going absolutely wild, roaring, the roaring sounds more like a gurgling, bubbling mess of sound and just begins spraying this black bile everywhere from every orifice, sprouting new orifices, the pressure seeming to puncture the skin, sending more of this bile flying out. It is a DC 20. Anybody that got less than 20, you will take. Oh, 39 points of acid. Oh, shit. All right. Um, I entered Blade Song and exit range as quickly as possible. Uh, you can see that that spray went as far as 120 feet in every direction. So I am. Is this yeah. like some, is this something that's going to be here for a while? With a dash, I'm out. <laughs> so... They all 
all get sprayed down with that. What the rest of you do? Yeah, uh, Valifon, uh, Bellacros will be right fucking behind you. You said 100 feet and in I every direction. I hope Lulu is as well. Yep. You said 100 feet in every direction? 100, 120 uh, feet in every direction. Does that include upward? Yep. Oh, dang. Uh. Hmm. All right, that's fine. We took nothing if we succeeded. Correct. Yeah, I'm fine. Dodge it or you don't. <clears throat> they were we'll trying to walk up to the knoll and try and grab him. Okay. Make an athletics check. Yeah, you grab him. He, <laughs> looks, towards you you. Sure. he looks towards you in, in surprise. Like, what is this? What is happening? I'll like drag him a little bit towards a pile of the black acid and I said, you told me where I need to go. And in a very intimidating fashion, why don't you start talking? Kind of like lean his head closer and closer towards the pool of acid. What information are you trying to get from this guy? He said he saw the location of the down. No, fortress. Our, 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 our imp guide said he saw the, he knows the location. <laughs> yeah. Fundamental misunderstanding of the situation there, Bill. <laughs> where's, where's that goddamn imp at? <laughs> uh, he's just, yeah, he's already booking it with Balafon, ready to take you to the spot. Uh, so, very I, uh, confused Arconoloth in hand. Bill, uh, realizing his mistake, just kind of tosses him aside. My bad. He plops him to the ground. It's like... <laughs> he's, he's just lost for words. He doesn't know what to say. He kind of scoots away from you. The other de the devils that are up on the scaffold and begin lashing new chains around this creature, pulling it back down into its position. Am I, Once I'm I'm standing here, it right? looks like anybody is having trouble... Anybody else is having trouble getting out of range, I will use Vortex Warp to get them out of range. <laughs> okay. We're not in combat yet, right? No, we are not in combat. We have not rolled initiative yet unless somebody takes a hostile action against the Cybriax itself or one of the three devils. I don't think we need to start a fight here. We know we just we just learned the information we need. Get out of here. Uh, I can probably fit someone on my back if someone needs to, f if someone wants to get out quick. Uh, Bill will kind of flick the bill of his hop hab up. Last chance before we leave. Uh, the Cybrix continues to rage, trying to kill its captors. Trying and unfortunately failing pretty spectacularly. In the biggest ash hole is told I take, and a good day to you, and I walk out. Sprays a bit of bile at you as you leave, Mrs. Oh, where's that goddamn imp at? <laughs> he's he's already in sprinkles. He's got he's like trying to figure out how to turn it on. Just get the fuck out of there. Okay. Um, once we're clear, well clear. Um, I'd like to suggest that we. Do take that long rest. <laughs> I'm the only one that dodged it, didn't I? Yup. Lulu and the Ape did too. Yeah. I got it. I was fine. I was a giant eagle. Nice. I'm good if people need to take a long rest. Was it half damage or just all or nothing? Uh, all or nothing. It, was, it, it got you or it didn't. Uh, Bill asked the imp, uh, how far is it away from where we are? It's about a day's travel. Then I'll, uh, I'll drive while other people who need to rest can long rest in the back of sprinkles. I'm okay with that. Yeah. All right, everyone, as you make your way towards the wrecked flying fortress, let's go ahead and take our break. And when we come back, you can finish your long rest and we will arrive there.
Alright, so welcome back. After you've all had your opportunity to rest during your journey between the Sibriex and the Wrecked Flying Fortress, um, making your way across the plains, you do find yourselves in the middle of what looks like a firestorm bursting up from the ground around you all. Luckily, Sprinkles is able to make its way around relatively easily. Um, you get the impression that were it not for your impressive vehicle that you all are ri riding around in, that these fiery plains would be incredibly difficult to navigate. Luckily, Sprinkles is a beast of a machine, and even as you're traveling through these literal storms of fire, instead of rolling clouds, you're getting bursts of flame as you travel through this area, but Sprinkles is more than up to the task more than up to the challenge. And after some nice fireworks and some displays of pyrotechnics erupting from the very earth of Avernus, you all do eventually make your way towards the flying fortress that your guide is leading you towards. And your first hint of your arrival is what looks like the peak of a mountain at first, but as you're all making your way closer and the image begins to come higher along the horizon, you see a towering wreck rising up and out of the scorched hellscape. Okay, before we before uh -huh. we go any further, would yeah. those of us who are wanting to able to take a long rest during this travel? Yes. Uh -huh. Everybody that needed a long rest has gotten one. So, this is what one of these things would look like were it mobile. This one is far beyond being mobile, however. It's like a giant sword blade tilting at a 20 degree angle, partially buried in the ground. Much of its exposed hull is rusted and torn asunder. Hot wind screams as it tears through the hollow structure. You can see that this thing looks like it's been picked over a couple times. A lot of its structure torn away, scavenged. Uh, you can also see six volt, what look like enormous vultures circling high overhead. Your guide points towards it and says that's the only fortress that's gone down in decades here. It's got to be what the Sibriance is talking about. Okay, I am going to go ahead and recast my Tiny Servant spell at 4th level. As we're uh, approaching, can I like uh, keep an extra watch in case there's any sort of like traps or someone's waiting for us to show up? Sure. Make a perception check. Um, Bill, there, you don't see any traps or anything like that. Um, there are tracks around. People have obviously been here and left during the time that it's been on the ground. There do is... Do we see... Good. Do we see any entrance into it? No obvious ones. You can see about maybe 40, 50 feet off the ground... There is an exposed, um, what looks like, what looks like a deck of this ship, the siding torn away either during the crash or by scavengers, it's unclear, but there's no doors or anything like that. The only entrance seems to be that one about 40 feet up off the ground in the torn deck area. Well, normally I would offer to go up there, but I've uh, unattuned my slippers of spider climb. So anyone else got a plan B? I do have a plan B. Um, so um, I will pull out a rope. And I will 
hand the rope to one of my tiny servants. So as you all disembark from Sprinkles and begin making your way towards the wreck, those six vultures flying around overhead let out a screech and then begin to dive straight down towards you while you're all still at ground level. Late song. <laughs> All right. Uh, does anybody else want to take an action? There's still um, no direct action against them at the moment, but if there's any preparatives that you would like to have done before they attack, you're more than welcome to now. And I'll just like... Go ahead. Oh. <laughs> All right. Anna, would, Anna would crouch down and spread out her arms and then jump into the air as she gets covered in feathers and turns into a giant eagle. Okay. And before you get out of range... Um, I cast Bless at second level, so everybody is blessed. Silvery moonlight washes over everybody. Noise. I want to throw the hand at the vultures. They don't have to be in range. <laughs> Make an athletics check. Bye-bye, dude. I'll just, uh, I'll ignite my uh, blood axe with my gauntlets of flaming fury. Okay. So, as you're all getting this together, as those six creatures come screeching down towards you, Bill just reaches down as um, as your guide is attempting to run back to Sprinkles, grabs him by the tail, does a sling spin on him, and flings him up into the air. You're, he falls far short of hitting any of the any of the creatures, but you see him arc up and over and he opens up his wings and glides into the opening of the wreck. And with that, we'll go ahead and roll initiative. The dark space ahead of very, you all is uh, the wall of the wreck. Bill has a very disappointed look on his face for his graceful landing. I'm gonna have to cut those wings off later. <laughs> Rude. And this is at initiative. This is at advantage on my. Yeah. Kroll's already throwing down here with crits. Here we go. Yeah. I'm ready. Okay. The loading board, sorry. Breeze? Got that giant eagle? Do you need me to bring one out for you? Uh, I like, can't see the board, so can you drag it up for me? Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Okay. And as they reach sixty feet above you all, that is where we will go ahead and roll initiative. I'm really sorry. It's still loading in. No worries, uh, no worries. It's taking a while. Uh, can you roll it for me? Just the, the energy of the eagle. Yeah. Okay. Eagle gets a 13 on the initiative. Foster, that puts you fourth to act. So we'll go ahead and get going. And all six of the Varrocks will be acting on the same initiative. So we've got plenty of time. Okay. They all rolled 20s. I mean, I could split them up if you'd like. We could have one yeah, individual initiatives for each of them. There's just six of them, so. You're in charge, whatever works for you. Yeah, you know yeah, what? Let's go ahead and let's fine. go ahead and split them. 
I, I have the group At initiative. At least two. Well. To two. <laughs> yeah, that was the decision. Either either split them into two groups or have them all roll the same. So we'll go ahead and split them. In it. Okay. Roll, you are up. They are diving down. They are 60 feet above you at the moment. 60 feet. Okay. 60 feet All right. So my hand axes, they have a range of uh, 60. Hold on. 20 feet, 60 feet, I believe, is the max that they can go. Fantastic. So I'm going to grab my plus one hand axe, and it ignites in my hand as soon as I nice. grab it. Uh, let me just, I'm going to be doing great weapon. Well, no, I can't do great weapon. This yeah. isn't a great weapon. All right. So I'm raging and I, are we still blessed? You are blessed. I just cast it. Nice. Okay. And then Gauntlet's Flaming Fury. Sorry. I'm trying to check everything. Make sure I got everything checked. And I throw. Right. Ooh, good start. Crit. Good start. Which one you throw? Which one you throwing at? Uh the one that's right next to me. Got it. The closest one. And I get a savage attack with that. It's a D. D six. So that one. You gonna trip it? <laughs> right. Drop yeah. The sky. <laughs> Oh, you can. Like, yeah, if you trip, if you if you trip attack a creature that is in the air, it drops. Unless oh, it okay. has, unless it has hover. Right. Sure. Let's do that then. We'll do a superiority. Try to trip it. All right. And also on the crit, the superiority die gets rolled twice too. So hey. <laughs> <laughs> but just one shot, one of these guys with your axe, quick here. <laughs> right, fucking hand axe for the win. Okay. Forty-two. Very nice. Wow. <laughs> All right. And what's the strength save? Uh, it's a 15. It gets a 12 and drops out of the sky 60 feet for another 6 D10 for another 6 D6. So now it's at your feet and prone. <laughs> yeah. Fuck yeah screeches as it drops out of the sky and crashes down to your feet. It is on the ground in front of you, prone. Alright, so I can take my blood axe out now. Yeah. And I will attack again. Do superiority, not savage. Right, so, with blood axe. 21. 21 hits. 20. It is resistant to fire. Oh, it is? Oh, dang it. Yep. All right, well, that first one also had fire. Oh, okay, let's go ahead and... Is it... So it only takes half of the fire damage it gets dealt. So that would be... It's a three on that first one, so that would be, what, a one? And then a four, so that'd be two. So okay. a total of three. Okay, so I'll just take that out of what we're doing here. So that's 15, so 12 more points. Okay. okay. Uh -huh. All right, anything I'll, else? I don't know if I want to waste it right now. I'll, I'll just, I'll just wait. To the first rock. My initiative is wrong because I have an advantage. That should be a 12. Yeah, go ahead and change it up. All right. And seeing you absolutely manhandle its friend, it is going to dive straight at you, Kroll. Okay. And since we don't respect Pythagorean here, it's right there. And. 
Yeah, it's just gonna dive right at you, Kroll. Okay. It is a 17 as it lashes out at you with its beak. That misses. I'm and gonna repost. Awesome. Okay, so we'll do an attack. I'm still raging. I'm blessed. Gauntlets of Fire, that does a little bit of damage, hopefully. 20. He's a hit, yeah. Okay. Okay. For the fire is three, so that's only one. Okay. So that'd be five, six, 11, 12, 13. 13 more, 13 points, all right. And after, after it misses you with its beak and you bring your ax down onto its back, Lashes out underneath with its talons. That is a 22 to hit. Yeah, that one hits. For 12 slashing. For 12. I'm raging, so that is 6. Nice, nice. Okay. All right. Okay. So seeing how you have handled its first, the first two that drops down, this one is going to drop down, but it is going to hover... This one right here, 20 feet, it is going to stop and begin to fly 20 feet up in the air. We'll put it at 15 feet from right here. And then it lets out this ear-piercingly shrill, shrieking cry. I need Valifon, Bill, and Lulu to make constitution saving throws. Does it do half damage on a success? There is no damage. Oh, okay. Oops, hold on a second. Okay. You can all figure yourself get woozy for a brief moment, almost seeming to lose your balance, but you're all able to fight through it rather effectively. This frock I assume, is... Go ahead. I assume that Ebon Star needs to make that same saving throw. Correct. This will not be pretty. <laughs> Ebon Star is stunned. Okay. This one is now 15 feet in the air and has stopped. Brings us to the next one. Oh, that was the next one, okay. Brings us to Bill. All right, so jumping is just your strength modifier, right? Or your uh, total there's, strength, right? So there's a high jump that uses something a little different. I'll need to look that up real quick. There's the long jump, which is your strength score, not modifier, just score. But there's something, it's different for a high jump. Like, you can't jump 15 feet straight up. <laughs> I mean... Maybe. High jump. When you make a high jump, you leap into the air a number of feet equal to three plus your strength modifier. What is your so, strength modifier? Uh, seven. So ten feet in the air. I still wouldn't reach him. That is just impressive. So I will allow you to make an <laughs> I'll allow you to make an athletics check. We're going to set the DC high. If you can get over a 21 on your athletics check, you will jump high enough to strike the Brock. I believe. Yeah, there it is. Jesus. Fucking with a plus 15, oh, yeah. I should have set it at like 26. Okay. <laughs> Noted. Uh, Noted. Okay, yeah, you can smack him. Yeah, you, so so you gave a grappler a... Belt of fire, belt of fire, fire yeah. strength. Yeah, I didn't give it to him. He earned it, okay? <laughs> no, I know. You, you know what I mean. I know. I'm just playing. Um, seeing it screech out, Bill will, like, rage, run, jump up, and I'm going to try and grapple him. Okay. All right. I feel like that would mean that you'd just be suspended in the air with him. Well, doesn't right, grapple if, if it succeeds to grapple, doesn't his speed go to zero? Speed goes to zero, but that, he's still in the air. Is it a flying creature whose speed goes to zero fall if they do not have hover? Is that a thing? That is a thing. I looked it up. I've been I've been studying that with Sentinel and Echo Knight. <laughs> okay. <laughs> that is good to know. Well, I was just going to hang out in the air and smack it with my cleaver, but that works too, I guess. 
<laughs> I don't think you can to succeed, but we'll check. 19 and fails. Uh, Comes and then falling down. Now, this is an interesting situation because it is falling and Bill is hanging on to its, I'm assuming its leg as it falls. So, Bill, I am going to give you the option of trying to get out from underneath it or taking the same fall damage that it's about to. Would, uh... Well, you're raging, right? Yeah, I was have raging, so... I'm gonna take that. It's only 3d6. Yeah, I'm gonna take that. Oh, no, wait. Because I'm gonna hit 15 him. 15 feet. 15 feet. It's only 1d6, so it's nothing. Yeah. Yep, I'm taking that. You take one point of bludgeoning damage as the rock falls on as the rock falls on top of you. He's gonna have to pay for his transgressions. Right. I'm gonna hit him with my uh, cleaver. <laughs> All right, Jesus, um, uh, okay. Bill. I was gonna say that I'm gonna say that you're both prone when you land, but it doesn't matter because uh, unless... okay, <laughs> so you could literally just use your half your movement speed to get back up and then use your right him. Yes, so. I'll do that. Because I'm totally using my sessional to uh, take that crit. Oh, yeah. Okay. Uh, he's prone. You don't need your sessional. You don't need your sessional. Oh, okay. It's prone. <laughs> All right. So we're missing stuff here. So there's four for ra four total for rage. Because does rage, rage gets doubled or it stays the same? Uh, rage is a flat thing, yeah, right? Okay. So yeah. two for yeah. rage and then. Sneak attack is three. Oh, we have a lot more map. Yeah, I just opened that up so Anna can actually have some room to fly around uh, where she needs to. Technically, you all cannot see anything past that stone line. We know that that shelf is up there, though. How high, though? 40 feet. You know the shelf okay. is up there 40 feet okay. above. Okay. I thought it was like I thought it was like my dark vision was acting up when I loaded the <laughs> no, map. No, no, no. Because no, because because uh... I've been considering vortex warping myself up there. Okay, so yeah, if you want to do that, you can. Um, but yeah, forty feet up is where that ledge starts. The rest of you cannot see anyone. Anyone that's not in the air at least thirty feet cannot see the ledge, but you do know it's there. Or you can't see into the ledge would be a better way for me to phrase that. 42 damage. 42. Splashing. Fuck yeah. And I love uh, it's it, I have a love it like a love hate relationship with higher level characters like 8 to 10 and then like 10 and higher. It's like I'm super impressed with y'all are capable of but it gets hard to give you balanced encounters. Oh, I bet. Uh that's my action movement bonus attack. Yep. Okay. Cuz like you can't uh, I already used a bonus action, so I can't hit it again. So, yep, that's me. Okay. Uh, Kroll, the it's rock hurt. that you absolutely manhandled gets up to its feet and hurt. shrieks in your face. Oh, it's not prone again, sorry. And shrieks in your face. I need you, Valifon. and Bill, to make constitution saves. Blessed, right? Yes. Yes. This this works the, with that too. Okay. Oh. I'm concentrating on bless rather than like shadow blade for a reason here. Yeah. <laughs> these things are saving. These things are saving throw machines. They're, you you've you've all fought them before. You've seen. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you've seen what they do. They just. And, and and I've studied them, so I know what they do. Yeah, they're just fucking saving throws at you for a while before they really start attacking. Okay. All right, everybody succeeds. Brings us to Eagle Cola. Oops, okay. Sorry. On my phone now. Um, okay. <laughs> so these things that are in front of me, how um, how high up are they? They are still there 60 feet up. Okay. But they're at the same height as each other? Yes, they are both at the same height as each other. Okay. Um... I will fly up to them with my 80 foot flying speed. Nice, um, nice. <laughs> uh, and yeah, I'll be directly between them so they can't uh, move past me without provoking anything. Um, and then I will attack them 
Okay. Being an eagle is weird because I have like a lot of different dice and modifiers going on right now. Right. Uh, I'm better off just rolling. Oh, no. Uh, okay. And getting the stats. There we go. Okay, so plus six to hit. Uh, and you are blessed. So that's 27 to hit. As oh, no, I'm sorry, 25 to hit. Jeez. Uh, that's not... <laughs> yeah, so I, that would be the first attack, which is uh, a beak, which is... Are they resistant to necrotic? Negative. Okay. I was just asking because I'll just give the total damage okay. result then. Because um, my, all my attacks are magic now. Got it. Um, so... That's the uh, first attack, and then I make another one with the Talons. Uh, that was against this one, I guess. Okay. Not the one in front of me. And the, right, I can reach that. Right? Yeah, yeah, you can. Yeah. Um, and then the, the next one will be against the one behind me. With... Nice. Oh, that, uh, was, your, that was your two, 18 to hit hits. Yes. Um, and then that's... Yes. There we go. Um... Okay. Same one yep. or the other yeah. one? Uh, this is the one behind me. Got it. And then I'll just stay there. Okay. Balapunk. One right here is still prone, right? This one, yes. Mm -hmm. So I will pull out my rapier and do a booming blade attack on it. That is not going so. to hit, unfortunately. Six sixteen. Oh, sixteen does. Sixteen does. I'm sorry. Um. Actually, that should have been higher. It didn't register my my blessed for some reason. That's fine. So, but 16 hits. So, um, 13 piercing, and it for some reason did not do the booming blade. So I'll roll that separately. Okay. 20 total. Another seven. So 20 total. Okay. And then it. Looks like it's still alive, so hit that it again. It is. So, another eight. Yeah. And. I am going to go. And 20, 30, 40 yeah. to here. That'd be it for me. Okay. You got Vrox acting. Anacola, this one is just going... Well, yeah. Yeah, we're gonna... It's gonna do its stunning screech. Uh, go ahead and make a constitution saving throw. I didn't do amazing. No, uh, no. Um, <laughs> even, even with your advantage, you would still unfortunately fail. I don't yeah. have advantage on that, I don't think. But Oh I know, I was just letting you know if you even if you had used your session, Oh oh, oh yeah, sorry, yeah, yeah, yeah. You're good. Uh, okay, so I right, I don't think we can see see um the Eagles roll, so that's fine. Okay, I'll go ahead and send that out right now. Ah Giant Eagle. How do you how do you pronounce that, Nicola? Eacle? Eacola, yeah. Eacola, nice. <laughs> Okay, I'm setting it right now to not whisper the rolls anymore for future reference. But, Anacola, you do feel your senses beginning to tunnel in, and you are stunned until the beginning of the Brock's next turn. Ouch. 
We link incapacitated as well. Until, I'm sorry, until the end of the Vrock's next turn. That means she falls, right? Yep. Oof, that's fine. Okay, so you were the full 60 up with them, right? Yep, 66. You want to roll or should I? I got it. Okay. Ouch. Yeah, oof. Ouch. Okay, so that Vrock is going to screech triumphantly. This one is going to descend down to here. Getting right in between Kroll and Bill. Lands. And screeches. Con saves, Lulu. Bill and Kroll. Okay. I was really hoping that one was going to chase me. Okay. Lulu is not in the initiative. Apparently, she gets to act on initiative count one. She's not stunned. We'll roll initiative for her now. And drop her to one. Okay. That does bring us to the last rock. Or I guess Lulu can act first, that's fine. Right. I should have cast it at a higher level than the blue blue would have had the bless. Sorry, Lulu. Lulu looks at the one that has not acted yet, and she looks over to it and shouts, You! Go away! She's going to cast Banishment at it. Oh, boy. <laughs> Go! Remember when Lulu not gets what memories... I expected. When Lulu gets memories back, so does she get spellcasting abilities back. These are, and this is, uh, these are demons, right? Yeah, so these are the demons. They can be permanently banished. So Anna, as that rock is closing in on you, its eyes hungrily looking down at you, Lulu does her bestest to help you out. And a charisma saving throw is what it's going to take. I'm out of range of silvery barbs if it passes. It gets a six. And oh, bye. <laughs> looks up towards Lulu as Lulu's shouting at it. It tilts its head confusedly for a moment and then and then blinks out of existence. With a popping noise. With a popping noise. So Lulu, Lulu twirls around in the air. On Banishment. <laughs> Lulu is indeed concentrating on banishment. Okay. okay. And how does that become permanent? One minute. After one minute. Okay. So she has to run away. Hell yeah. All right. That Brock is not an issue anymore, at least for now. Girl. Um, Lulu is going to celebratorily fly around in circles a little bit. And she's still on the ground, so she would get an opportunity to attack from this one if she left. Yeah, I think she's just going to turn to face it like she's about to tux tusk it. Girl, you're up. All right, so Kroll's going to attack this one again. He's going to do it with Great Weapon Master this time. And... Yeah. I don't... Yeah, I'm not going to waste the superiority right now. 
Not for that. Oof. Unfortunate. I forgot to say rec. Okay, never mind. So that one I screwed up on. It's okay, reckless All wouldn't right. have hit it anyways. Yeah. Alright, so this time I'm reckless. Okay. And I will swing again. Unfortunate rules. All right. Well, that sucked. Yeah. Um, I will. I will do action surge. Okay. I'm not going reckless this time. It just seems like it's messing me up. Got it. Got it. I mean, I mean, I mean, I meant uh, great weapon master. I'm still gonna go reckless. Okay. Got it. Is that just for the first attack? Reckless. Uh, or is once that you reckless? Go reckless. Once that's, you go. That's for yeah. everything, right? Yeah, it's once until the end of your reckless. turn, I think. Yeah. Okay, you I just uh, have a brain fart. You do get to choose right. the Great Weapon Master, though. Yeah, I'm not doing that right now. So That's a crit. I am reckless. <laughs> yes, oh yes. All right. So, Savage Attack. That's a D12. And... Ending this thing's whole career in two turns. Just bye. <laughs> All right, what do we got? Crappy rolls, but yeah, unfortunate. That's maybe not gonna kill. I need to roll. I'm gonna. I need to roll a d6. So that's three damage for the fire. I took. I took that off because it was just messing everything up. Since okay. it... so another three there. So it's three. Yeah, three fire. Well, you get one d6 of fire damage on each hit. Yeah, with the so gone with crit, So roll two d6. <laughs> yeah. All right. Yeah. So another D6. Okay, so that's so, two more. Yep. So what's the total? We got 7, 9, 14, 16, 19, and then 5. So 24. Oh, so close. All right. Still got one more attack. My blood axe. Still reckless. Uh, 20 hits. Okay. So, All and right. then my fire damage, even though it probably doesn't matter. Three more. Yep, off with his head. All right, can I take my uh, plus one hand axe out of him and just like bring it down <laughs> right to the top of his skull, just splitting it? Absolutely. And then I just take it back. All right. Um. You just killed somebody with Great Weapon Master. You get to make a bonus action attack, oh, I believe. I, I, I don't... I didn't do Great Weapon Master. It doesn't matter. It, it's just you oh, have the feet, so you do you it. You have Great Weapon Master. You oh, killed oh. something. <laughs> okay. Sorry you guys have to keep explaining everything, no. but okay. It's, it, it's, it's fine. Yeah. It's, a com it's, a, it's a complex feat. <laughs> and, and, dude, half of this stuff that Carl brings up, I don't even know, so don't feel bad. <laughs> I know right, this so I because guess... of watching optimization videos. <laughs> so I guess bonus what uh, bonus attack that one right there. Okay. With blood axe. Uh, that's a hit. Okay. Uh, no savage attack. I was just gonna say at this rate we'll just like crawl take them all out, not have to worry about this. <laughs> Why do you think I am where I am? <laughs> right, I'm getting the fuck out of here. All right, so that is another 11. And then you got to add your fire damage. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, okay, so one. to 12. Okay. And that's, that's <laughs> I it. I think you're tapped. That was quite the turn. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Brings us to him, who is going to retaliate. And looking towards you, just murdering his friend, he turns towards you and much like a squid activates this defense mechanism that just sees this black cloud erupt from it. Kind of like it shakes its feathers, like it's trying to dry itself off. But this black cloud of spores begins to spread away from it. Crawl. Yeah. Uh, I think it's just you. Yep, I think you're the only one within 15 feet of this thing. Yep. So, con save. Con save, yep. Well, alright then. 
I think that works. <laughs> yeah, as the spores settle around you and this thing's looking like it's about to jump at you, like it's about to get a meal, you see its expression just droop as it sees you completely unfazed by this. Yeah. All right. Bill, you still have this one grappled, correct? Yuppers. Okay. Um, it is also going to let loose a barrage of those spores. Con save, please, Bill. Uh, who? Uh, Anna Cole is stunned. Okay. Okay. Bill, no effect. Okay. There's blast if you needed it. I think that will take out Ebon Star because that's what half damage on us. I mean, I don't think this. Yeah, yeah, it is half damage on a success. So unfortunately, Ebon Star is spored. Bill, that does bring us to you. Uh, not to be outdone by a uh, crawl. Bill's just going to start hacking at one and pull him onto. <laughs> Oh my god! What's yeah! <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> Thirty three. Yeah, okay, uh Bill, how do you murder this thing? Same same thing. I just try and cleave its head further down its neck than what Kroll did. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> well, at least it's not turn... grappled anymore. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Don't have to worry about that. Uh, and then I'm actually going to try and grapple the one behind Kroll. Okay. It can't succeed. Actually, I'm just going to shift it away from Kroll so that way it's out of its range and um, not going to get a flanking on him. So however you want to do that movement wise to move it out of the range of crawl. So you want to like put him on top of his dead buddy? Yeah, that'd be fine. And then I'll use my bonus action to scimitar speed chopper him again. Okay. Sixteen's a hit. And that's what I got. Okay. Dead. Anna, unfortunately, you are still stunned until the rock that stunned you gets a turn. Does bring us to Valifon. I will move forty feet to here. Anna, if you're if you were saying anything in response to that, uh, you are muted. Just wanted to let you make sure that you weren't trying to say anything. Not much I can do. Okay, or, gotcha. Sorry. Gotcha. <laughs> I can't even speak with ink about the day. I think 30 hits. Yeah, for, that it certainly does. Um, Looks like. And then. Hit it again for another 12. Okay. okay. And just for a reminder. Okay, so attack rolls do have advantage. Yep, but no auto crit. That's good. Okay, it is going to begin tearing into Anacola. It lands right beside her and starts a tearing. 20 to hit with the beak. And an 18 with the talons for a grand total of 25 points of slashing. Slashing and piercing, 25 points.
And it looks like your eagle is still up. Still got some eagle left. Yes. Lots of hit points. Okay. Oh, did you already, did you have your, uh, your extra HP on there too? Yeah. Temp nice. I keep it in the red field. I don't know where else to put it. Nice. That's a perfectly reasonable place to put it. All right. Brings us to the rock that is now being manhandled by Bill. And it is going to turn and start a scratching and a pecking. Bill is a 21 to hit with the bite, with the beak, I mean. Yep. Four. Nice. Four. 15 piercing. Pretty close to max. Uh, seven. Yep. And then here come the talons. It's an 18 to hit, Bill. Haha, AC. I finally don't get it. E auto hits. <laughs> nice. All right. Lulu is going to continue concentrating and rush over and headbutt the one that's attacking Anna. And miss. Good job, Lulu. Lulu really needs flyby. Yeah. All right. Brings us to Kroll. All right. So Kroll is going to continue to hack away at this guy. Uh, he's going to go Great Weapon Master with Bless. Or he's blessed. Reckless. To say. Yeah, and we're going to go Reckless as well. I mean, Reckless and Bless should completely offset your... It your... should. <laughs> it should, right? Great. In theory. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so here we go. Ah, uh, okay. Hey, nice. There we go. Okay. Then I, I want to spend a superiority die to try to do a trip attack. Okay. So that's another D twelve. Or D eight. I mean, sorry. There we go. And then a D6 for fire. So another three. Nice, nice. So okay, that's so 27, 30. Yeah. Oh, yeah, that's with great weapon. Okay, we're good. Oof. And then second attack, we'll do the... Oh, wait, uh, the trip attack does he oh, yeah. fail. Uh, let me make that saving throw real quick. 15. He gets 10. Down he goes. Hell yeah. All right, so. Great weapon. Bless. Advantage from. Uh... Oh, advantage from Reckless already. Oh, yeah. So. Yeah, okay. And. Blood Axe. Hit. Okay. okay. And then the D6. Okay. So another two. Yep. Takes a 23. Three. Yeah. And we can't really do anything else right now. Okay. So that's it for him. Bill, it's going to scramble to its feet as best it can. And begin attacking. Cool, cool. I'm sorry, uh, Kroll, attacking Kroll. It's the one that just, that Kroll was just attacking. Okay. okay. All right, Kroll is on 11 on the first one, obvious miss. And then even lower on the second one, so. All right, so I'm gonna repost on one of them. All right, yep. And Blood Axe. Great Weapon Master. Yeah, and then I'm gonna use Orcish Fury as well. Well, wait, or Orcish Fury. I could. I hold on. Let me find it really quick. Let me make yeah. sure I'm doing this correctly. Yeah, you choose Orcish Fury when you hit. Believe. When I hit, yes, yes, yes. Okay. Let me just bring it up. Yep. When you hit with an attack. When you hit. Yeah. Okay. All right. So blood axe. That's a hit. All right, so then I'll do Orcish Fury. Okay. So 
sorry, there's a lot going on here. So you roll another die of the damage type. Uh, D12. And... 34 plus... Plus 1. 35? 35. Jeez, down he goes. Damage out. Oh yeah. Insane. <laughs> <laughs> Freaking Kroll's just stacking bodies over there. <laughs> Should have just let that other guy there, so. <laughs> okay. Anna, you are up. Finally. Okay. Yeah, right. <laughs> cool. <laughs> uh, stunned, paralyzed. The stuff that makes it so you can't play the game are always the worst. Okay, so she is going to fly directly upward, and then above the the rock or rock. What are they? Uh, yep, rock. rock. Okay, yeah, she's going to fly directly above it, um, and then she's going to bonus action leave wild shape. Oh what? Um, and then drop on top of it, and try and like okay. sail, <laughs> and try and like cling onto it. Okay. Uh, Athletics or acrobatics? Yeah. Acrobatics. <laughs> Still not great, though. Hey, amazing. Okay. <laughs> uh. Its opposing check is a seven. <laughs> yeah. So in its surprise, it doesn't realize what the fuck just happened. It tries to look up at you and sees you just turn into this druid form and drop on it, and it is just two shots to react. So you have it grappled, and you're on top of it. Nice. Okay. Um, and then she's just going to, as it turns to look at her, she's just going to smile widely. Um, oh my god, okay. This is good. I like it. I like it. Alright. Eh? Okay. It's saving throw result against this. It has advantage, unfortunately. Yes, it does. It's also got magic resistance, so already had advantage. Oh. oh, okay, so we're good. No difference. That is an 8 and a 2. Oh. Yes! <laughs> okay, so I'm just gonna drag my eagle out so it doesn't mess up initiative. Um, and then I'll drag me to right here. Okay. Uh, as I uh, cling, to its, cling to my new mount. Oh, uh, God. How long? Wait, how long does this last? Uh, an hour. Nice. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, is it not concentration? Do I just have? Oh, yeah, nice. There's no concentration there. It's just yeah. Term creature. Okay. I'm assuming it won't. Yeah, it doesn't attack its friend. Its friends, does it? Uh, uh, it's friendly yeah. to you. It doesn't say it, so. Yeah, this isn't yeah. dominate monster. This is yeah, charm monster. Yeah, but I could be like, hey, bestie, do you want to look? Right, so I think the charm condition is what we need to look at for that. Mm -hmm. Can't attack the charmer or target the charmer with harmful abilities or magical effects. Has advantage on any ability checks to interact socially. So you don't have control over it. It's just mm -hmm. not going to try to hurt you. Yeah, it doesn't mean it won't try to hurt my friends, though. So I'm just going to, like, start... Uh, whispering sweet nothings to it and telling it to fly <laughs> in the, in the right. other direction. <laughs> Alright, so it can it can hear you and understand you. So, I am going to... Oh my god, with that int. Go ahead and make a persuasion check at advantage. Okay. Am I good at those? I'm not. <laughs> it's intelligence is 8. This will not be a high DC. <laughs> hey! <laughs> yeah, 19 oh, is totally good. <laughs> so, Anna, what do you encourage this creature to do? Uh, she's just going to, like, start petting its scalp um, and <laughs> um, encouraging it not to, like, bite or scratch at Lulu, um, who, what it looks very, in it looked very intent to do moments yeah. prior. Um, <laughs> and just be like, shh, 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 calm down, calm down. It's okay, it's okay. Fly down. Descend slowly. <laughs> All right, so yeah. So it just, it's just, it's just like, eh, 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 eh. It, it's like, it, it's, it, it seems upset that it doesn't get to munch on Lulu like it wanted to, but it is going to listen to you. 
and it kind of lowers its head dejectedly. <laughs> and then she'll like put a hand up for Lulu to like, don't, don't, don't. <laughs> <laughs> Lulu looks confused for a moment, her head tilting back and forth, and she like lunges forward just a little bit like she's going to tusk it and then backs up. <laughs> lunges forward a little bit more and then backs up. <laughs> uh, all right uh yeah go fight that other one over there i'll deal with i'll do i'll deal with xavier <laughs> lulu gives like a confused nod and turns around <laughs> uh <laughs> all right uh that's everything that was a, an amazing comeback from being yeah right <laughs> okay valifon you're up Blade rapier attack on it. 26, I assume, hits. Yeah, most certainly. For 15. And then All right. a regular rapier attack for another 8. Alright. Good stuff. Okay. Yep. Anything else from Valifon? That's it from me. Okay. Yeah, this one is just going to lower its head dejectedly and take a single step back away from Lulu, who is not going to take the opportunity attack against it. Oh, Anna, uh, cl right click on your token and click to front. Uh, uh, sorry, right um, click on your token, advanced option. Yeah. Oh, I'm sorry, that's not advanced. Just right-click on your token and click to front. Will it let you do that, or is that just a DM option? Nope, that's a I DM don't... option. Okay, really? Yeah. All right, one second. <laughs> to front, and now you are actually riding the Brock. Okay, cool. Oh, okay. <laughs> All right. Uh, yeah, that Brock is not going to take any hostile actions towards you, and you have prompted it to not go flying after any of your buddies, so it will do nothing. This one does something. It is going to... I think it's just going to keep trying to kick the shit out of Bill since he's got it grappled. Get some. Yeah. Uh, it does, in fact, get some, Bill, with a 23 to hit. Yeah, all right. I should have kept my mouth shut. <laughs> That's a 13 piercing damage off the beak. The talons come in, and that... Ooh! Wow! Double crits on the talons. Oh, my God. That's a huge oh, cool. hit. That's a huge hit. Oh, cool. um, I'm wait. Yeah. Got it? We got a barb yeah, coming yeah. in? I'm barbing it. Blech. My favorite fucking spell. Alright. My double crit, though. The damage was so tasty, too. I know. <laughs> 32 points of slashing that would have taken. No. That would have been pretty good. No, 42. Math is hard. 42 points of slashing that would have been. Alright, let's see. Here comes the next roll. Talons, talons, talons. It is still a 21 to hit. Yeah, but it's not a crit. It is not a crit. Oh. It is 20 slashing. If I know anything about what number is bigger than the other, that is better than 42. 20 points of slashing to Bill, and that does end the Vrock's turn. Brings us over to Lulu, and she has learned her lesson about assuming you all are good creatures and will not horn of blasting you all. And tusks. Where does she have more, more good spells to use? I think banishments are big ace in the hole for right now. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Still, still concentrating on banishment. She is going to headbutt this one right here and miss as she does. As she always does. <laughs> Scroll your own. Not that it really matters if she doesn't. Uh, Anna, they were promised um, to. They were promised to Bill if you all retrieve the rods. Gotcha. Which we have to do anyway. So. So crawl will move to there, and he will attack Great Weapon Master. He's raging. Okay, everything's clicked. That is it. Solid it. Okay. Bye, Brock. <laughs> <laughs> right, he's fucked. 
And then a D6 for fire. So two. So that's 14, 19, 20. 20, yep. okay. And then he will attack again. Same thing, great weapon master. Good hit. Okay. And then my D6. So that's 17, 21, 22. 22, not quite enough. Ah. I could add a superiority die, but it's too late. All right. Yeah. So that's it for that's it for my turn. Okay. He did. Bill. I'm just gonna hit it. Just go ahead and hit it. Pretty hard. Cool. Twenty-four. Down he goes. So you're you're two and two. Two for Kroll, two for Bill. And they are stacked on top of one another once more, <laughs> just literally stacking bodies. What are we going to do with the other one? Okay, so yeah, you all turn to see Anacola on the back of this winged vulture creature. What do you all do? Go ahead, and drop, go ahead and drop out of initiative now. If you all do decide to murder this thing, there's really nothing it can do to stop you. Just tell it to go home. Crow is going to look at Bill and ready a hand axe. Bill is just cleaning off his cleaver, ready, <laughs> waiting. <laughs> okay. So, uh, she's, she's going to fly down to Sprinkles, um, and she's going to go beneath the deck and then come back out with um, an exotic saddle. Um, she's going to go over to the rock and saddle up um, and she's like I am not I do not want to leave it it is it is my pet <laughs> it only wants a nightmare <laughs> so how long does your charm last it lasts one hour however I have three potential spell slots to use it on and also if we can find one thousand dollars worth of gems by tomorrow I will be able to enlist it uh, with me for a, a whole day by planar binding it. <laughs> uh, <laughs> the only thing that I would need is one, uh, a whole night of it being chained up somewhere. Um, totally easy, totally doable. Uh, uh, she, she, um, as she's talking, um, the she she could recognize her own um like unreality of what she's saying like this is not a feasible option <laughs> or thing that can be ha that thing that can happen um and that sadness dawns upon her um as she unsaddles the rock um so and then why can't this work uh what well okay so one i would have to we'd have to it would be very annoying Okay. To I mean, do. that's reasonable. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Two, it would cross. It would, cross, over to, over it to would it. cross. Yeah, just let it go. Let Kroll talk to it for a minute. Just let it go. <laughs> it would cost. Two, it would cost a thousand dollars a day to upkeep. A thousand dollars a day. Okay. Yeah, that's a bit. It's a bit. That, I was, was going to say, like, you all are in front of an actual like flying fortress. The idea that there's a thousand a thousand gold of gems inside of there is not out of the realm of possibility. But a day. Yeah. That's a, a day. day. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I just read the spell. I was reading through it as you were talking, and I'm like, this is this is a thing. This could happen. But yeah, that is that is prohibitively expensive. <laughs> um hmm. But we are about to go into this place. So You've got I some will time to think about it. <laughs> yeah, I will keep it they, they will assist us in our current mission, and then I will and then I will send them to the farm up north. Oh God, no! Oh, shit! Oh man! Just look at the flowers. Look at the pretty yeah. flowers. Just don't name it, okay? <laughs> it's already named. I named no. them already. I forget what it was. I think it was like Esteban. Esteban. Like yeah, Empire. you called it Esteban. <laughs> it was definitely something else. I'll check the. I'll check the tape afterwards. But oh, I had. Oh God! 
Okay, it Xavier. Was, yeah, Xavier. Was. It's Xavier. Xavier, there you go. Yep, with the bald head. <laughs> yep. Yep. yep, yep. <laughs> okay, I just want to say yeah. that I actually think that casting second level Bless for this combat did more damage yeah. than casting fifth level Shadow Blade. Yeah, it was super, super helpful. A lot, yeah. <laughs> yep, yep. All right, everyone. So as you wrap up here and cleaning the blood off your weapons, saddling up Xavier, getting him all ready to go up, Anna has an awesome new ride to get up into the Flying Fortress. But as you're all preparing to plan out your ascent, you will see a rather large dust cloud forming to the east of you all. Didn't notice it approaching as you were engulfed in the fight, but there is most certainly a small contingent of vehicles approaching your position. What do y'all do? ETA? Make a perception ch perception or survival. Either one of those would be appropriate. Anyone who would like to can make them. You said perception? I can do a perception. Perception or survival. And I'll go ahead and use my inspiration. Right? Why not? <laughs> okay. Um, so they'll be here in approximately 60 seconds. Oh. Do we want to fly? We have a thing we can climb up, right? I could fly. I could fly most of us up there. Anna, with your. Have you used your session oh. yet? Uh, I'll use the 26. With your 26, Anna, you are able to cat. You are able to spot a few other things. These vehicles look very familiar. It takes you a moment to put your to put your finger on exactly where you've seen these vehicles before. But what solidifies what it is that you're seeing is when you see a green flame wreathed skull rise up out of the passenger seat of one of these approaching dune buggy oh. style vehicles. Oh, what's and then name? hanging off Me the side of one Bart of the larger Bartholomew vehicles, or... you see a pair of Kenku. Yeah. Yeah. Mad Maggie's crew, isn't it? And as oh, Mad no. Maggie's oh. crew approaches the wrecked flying fortress, that is where we call it a session today. Did we do anything to offend Mad Maggie? No, she uh, left in good terms. 